If you take everything we've done so far and just clean it up into their own views with names that match to your app, you'll see something like this. The create view, the update view, I changed this. The list view, the detail view, change that. Right, so you should have an idea of how to do all this. If you don't, go back a few videos. Um, now what we do is we look at our URLs and you'll see something like this. This is related to that. But the problem comes up in two forms. Number one, we have this is not actually that reusable of an app, right? I have to actually import all of these views right on my URLs. And number two, what if you accidentally use the same name and same keyword arguments somewhere else? Remember, our model is based off of that. What happens? Well, what happens is it doesn't work as expected. You go to a different view altogether. Um, that is not great. So what we want to do then is actually put this in to its own URL module inside of the app that it's using, right? To make that app reusable and also avoid situations that I just mentioned. So to make these URLs, I can actually import all of this if I wanted. Um, or I could just do a quick import just like this, right? So this is a relative import of all the views that I have and it's importing path. And then we just declare URL patterns back in our main configuration URLs. I can go ahead and cut all of this out and paste it into my URL patterns now. Okay. So these are now those apps URL patterns. So back in my URLs, I actually have a way to use those URLs. It's right here in the comments. It's already in there. So all we have to do is import include and then bring in the example that it gives what is for a blog app. In our case, we're using the products app and we just do it like that and then put a comma at the end. And now our URL patterns, our main configuration URL patterns are a lot cleaner and I can actually delete the imports that are coming through there. So I save this and I refresh in here um, I'm getting a page not found. What's going on here? Well, it's actually showing me the stacked level of my URL. So if I do products, products, it works, but that's not what we want. The only reason that that is the case is because we haven't gotten rid of our original path that was in there. So just getting rid of that will solve that problem. There definitely is still one more problem that we need to solve. So we save this and refresh. I still have my products rendering as they were. I click on this, it's still bringing me to the wrong place. And this is where name spacing comes in. So if we do app name inside of our apps URLs to the name of our app, so in my case, products, right? You just call it that. Now what I can do in my model is just add that in here to products colon. And now my reverse is based off of the app itself or the namespace and the URL name. So we save that, refresh, and now it's actually going to take us where it should. This is a common problem. So if you have to test this out and try it out on your own, please go ahead and do that. And do realize that having names on the URLs doesn't mean that it's going to check to make sure that those things are unique. So this is a, a way to do that. I mean, you can change your product's app name if you need to, um, and that would allow your namespace to change and therefore your reverse method to change as well. As you can see, this is why reverse is actually very important. That's This is the main reason is then when I wanna bring this app into a whole nother project, my URLs, all I have to do is declare what they are as the app name. I have to make sure my users know or that third party package know, hey, here we go. We've got our product URLs here and along with that namespace. I realize there's a lot going on here, so you're definitely gonna to wanna to try this out multiple times. Make multiple apps, make multiple models, do the views, do all the things that we've done leading up to this point multiple times on your own, try it out, and then go back and rewatch if you need to.